edition of the NBA Outlet Preview Series presented by OTGBasketball.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at OTGBasketball. I'm your host, Nick Fay. With me today, Harris Wichard. What's up, Harris? How's it going, Nick? Excited again to continue our preview series here at OTG. Uh, you had mentioned it uh, at Twitter, OTG Basketball. And listen, tonight we're looking at a very intriguing 19-ranked team by our writers, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yeah, this is probably one of the first teams that I – I mean, I disagreed with a few teams in the past, but this team I think has a lot more potential than they're giving them credit for. I think they'll take a bigger jump, especially with Thibodeau as the new coach. I think that's going to have a huge impact, get these young guys to play some real good defense. Carl Anthony Towns is going to take another step. Wiggins is going to get a little better. This team's going to be fun to watch. Great talent going forward. I don't think they're going to contend in the West, but I could definitely see a playoff appearance. Playoff appearance. Well, Wow. I think you're too. I think you're a year. I, I see where you're coming from. I think you're a year or two early. I agree with most of the things you just said, but I think you are. I don't say falling victim. Everybody believes that this team's going to be good. It's just a matter of when. Now they have the right coach in place, which you're 100 percent right about, in Tom Thibodeau. So for me, it's just about when, and I'm not sure it's going to be this year. I would predict them to fall out of it this year, playoff race. But would it shock me if they were in? No. This is the reason why I say this. A lot of these guys are not used to winning in the NBA level. Now, these guys are used to playing in the playoffs in the NBA le- at the NBA level. Garnett, as a 21-year-old vet, could help them with some of that stuff. But you have two the past two Rookie of the Year winners in Wiggins and Towns. We know how talented they are. Both of them play both ends. But I'm not so sure how quickly they're going to put everything together. Levine, I think the jury is still out a little bit. Tyus Jones, the kid from Duke, the jury is still out. Is Rubio their starting point guard? Are they trying to deal him? So there's still some question marks for me. Is the future very bright in Minnesota? Absolutely. Could they end their drought since haven't made the playoffs since 2005? It's very possible. But for me, I'm a little bit more pessimistic than I think most people, even though I think the rookie of the year will again come from Minnesota, the kid from Providence and Chris Dunn. But I think I'm a little bit um, more skeptical than most, saying that this might take a year or two under the new coach and new regime. Yeah, no, I'm not saying they're a lock for the playoffs, yeah. but I definitely would not be surprised if they got there. I think they'll compete for the eighth seed. You know, this is a talented bunch. They'll play good defense. And like we've mentioned in the past, we talked about it in the East too, those bottom playoff spots are available. So, you know, there is some competition. And, you know, these young guys are hungry. Yeah, there's going to be opportunity for sure. It's just a matter of what, uh, how quickly they can put – what talent they have together. They definitely have the right coach in place there in Thibodeau that who will take no nonsense. He's kind of like Garnett in a sense. He's going to instill a you know great uh, defensive mindset for this group. So it's going to definitely be exciting to watch Minnesota. Yeah, definitely fun team. Talk about their additions. You already mentioned one draft pick, Chris Dunn. And talk about a little bit about him. Chris Dunn's fantastic. I mean, the guy's an offensive juggernaut at Providence. He's 6'4", 210, can shoot the basketball. He played two games in the summer league and averaged 24 points a game. And so he really can score the ball. And that's when people think about Chris Dunn, they think of his ability to score. And he was a very solid player at Providence. So I I look for him to be a threat because they're not loaded at that spot. They have Levine, they have other guys, but Dunn is a more polished offensive player than Zach Levine. Yeah, and I mean, he can play defense as well. The Timberwolves obviously think highly of him. They didn't trade him for Jimmy Butler in that possibility, you know, at least of what we know. So, and you mentioned it before, Don is a Rookie of the Year candidate. By his peers, he was voted as a favorite. It's like, you know, they think highly of him. I think he'll have a big season. And like you mentioned, point guard depth, not very high there. So he could definitely get the start. Well, he played four years in college, too, so he's not coming in like these 18- and 19-year-old kids are. He's 22 years old, Nick, as a, as a rookie. Yeah, you know, the, he's mature. You know, he spent the four years there, developed his game, has a little bit better understanding than some of these young guys. So that'll help him, especially in his first year as a rookie. Definitely. And this is a, this is a Timberwolves team that is loaded with first – this is probably the, mo- the most loaded roster when it comes to first-round picks. I mean, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven – 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. They have 12, 13 guys that were taken in the first round. This is a team that's been building up for a moment quite like just like this where they could try to put everything together. I still think it's a year or two away from being a juggernaut, but in three years, 
I could see this team hosting playoff games. Yeah, definitely. In a few years, this looks like a dangerous team in the West, yeah. especially with just Wiggins and Towns alone. You know, those two are going to be very good players. Yeah. And, you know, so. Both of them are still babies, Nick. They're both. Yeah, deaf young guys, a lot of time to add to their game. Towns is 20, and he was phenomenal last year. One of the better rookie seasons I've seen in a long time. And Wiggins is, what, 21 maybe? Yeah, probably 21, maybe even 20 himself. So yeah, he's 21. Both young guys, a lot of time to grow. Yeah. And, and they Wiggins will together. another one. 81 games played last year, 82 the year before. And he's healthy. And he scored 20 again. He's been healthy. He's been active. We've been using him in DraftKings and FanDuel. He's a 6'8", long, athletic body. He's been – he's lived up to the hype too. Yeah. And I think this is a big year for him, you know, kind of start to take that next jump. Get maybe in that all-star contention, maybe not make the team, but, you know, get your name mentioned. It's new coach, you know, and maybe he'll add a, a bit to his defense. He has a lot of potential as a defender with that athleticism and his length. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Timberwolves free agent signings. They weren't super active. Obviously, they have young talent they need to develop. And they already got a roster full of talent. So they picked up some bench guys, Jordan Hill. Uh, Brandon Rush, two guys, and Cole Aldridge. Some guys, you know, give him some depth, give him solid minutes in the front court. And, you know, a little bit something that Thibodeau could rely on early on. You know, he doesn't have to count on the young guys all the time. Yeah, and it's it's a team that, with the free agent signings, of, I like the Hill pickup for them. I think they need some... And listen, as a, as a guy that was picked by the Knicks and Nick fans a little frustrated by him, he's kind of carved out a nice niche for himself in the league. Yeah, I mean, he still looks like he could be better. Like, he's a yeah. frustrating player to watch, to be honest. Yeah, you know what? But he's got a nice little elbow jump shot. With town, Playing alongside Towns is going to make anybody look better at that position. So they're, if they're starting four, it's, they're starting four is probably going to be Gorgie Dang, maybe, or Shabazz Maha. Yeah, no. no. Gorgie Dang. But then Hill could come in and play 20 minutes a game. Exactly. You know, he could be the big off the bench. You know, uh, Pekovic, he never really plays. He's always injured. He's kind of fell off a little bit. So definitely okay, some room to get those backup spots. Opening night, starting lineup, I think they'll probably put Levine at the two. Yeah. They'll probably go Rubio, Levine, Wiggins, Dang, and Towns. Yep, sounds about right to me. So, and then off the bench, they'll have options. They could go with, obviously, they'll have Tyus Jones, the kid who's gotten a lot better, who won the MVP of the Summer League, I believe, this year. Yep, he did. Yeah. So, he played in a bunch of games over the summer. He averaged 20 this year in eight Summer League games. So, he's going to have a, he's going to make an impact this year also. And they have Chris Dunn, obviously, who's going to come off the bench. I think Chris Dunn will eventually start for this ball club, and they'll have a team that of Levine and Jones that come off the bench to almost give them that injection of offense and, and, and to run the show when, when Rubio and Dunn are on the bench. When Rubio and Dunn get a spell or, or sit for 10 minutes. Well, you touched on it earlier. I think uh, Rubio could definitely be on the move. Yeah. Uh, definitely at some point this season, maybe even before the season starts. They want to let these young guys play. You know, Rubio, he does fit, but they'd be happy to let Chris Dunn get the starting job or Levine pick up more minutes or, or even Tyus no, Jones. Yeah, yeah, Jones would – Levine and Dunn are twos at 6'4 and 6'5, but they could probably play the one. But the true one of this team will probably be Jones going forward. Well, I've heard a lot about a Dunn at the one. Yeah. Levine more so at the two. But, yeah, but you mentioned also as well, Tyus Jones had a nice summer league. So that always helps his bidding. Uh, well, it's going to be exciting. Like, like Dunn, Levine, Jones, and, and Rubio will all be fighting for minutes. So – it's you know it's cool to see it's gonna be cool to see how that plays out. Yeah, and who gets the minutes? Yes. Talking about departures, they really didn't lose anybody. Tayshawn Prince, you know, he was their veteran last year. He gave him some solid minutes, but obviously he's at the end of his career. Uh, Damon Rudez, you know, international player. He's had some decent moments. He was on the Pacers a year or two ago. He had some big shots, but didn't really fit well. I see what he does in Orlando, but uh, they didn't lose much. No, and none of those guys really stuck out for me. Um, more more improvement for this team than departures. 
Um, I don't think they're really going to hurt from any of the guys you just had mentioned. And this is a team that has, as we have said, things to look forward to and people to prove wrong. And hopefully, and, you know, they're doing Garnett a favor by keeping him on the roster at this point of his career. More as like a, almost a second coach. He'll be like an assistant coach player, spot minutes here and there if anybody needs it. But Kevin Garnett is on this roster for one reason and one reason only. And that is to help Downs develop into an MVP candidate in my mind. Well, and I also think, you know, Garnett has a big impact as a as a veteran on these rookies. Yes. You know, he shows them how to be a professional. I remember when uh, Mason Plumley was on the Nets rookie year, he had a big impact his rookie season, and he said Garnett was a big reason for that. So I think he can kind of really lead the way for these guys. But talking enough about Garnett, do you think the Timberwolves are going to be better this season or worse? Well, they're going to be better. Um they won, let's see, they weren't very good last year. If I'm not mistaken, they were under 30 wins, right? Sounds about right. Yeah, so this is going to be a team that's going to fight um, to win 40 this year. So 29 and 53, they're much improved. Towns, Wiggins getting better. I think I'm going to have them on the outside looking in again, but I think they could be like 38 to 40 wins. And if it's a 500 spot that makes that eighth spot, like the Rockets were 41 and 41 last year and made the playoffs, I think they could really slide right in there. So I'm rooting for them. I want them to be the eighth seed, seventh seed. But again, if I had to predict, and we do predict, uh, I would say no, but that's where they'll be, 40-41. So I think, yes, much improved from last year. Yeah, I think they'll definitely be a lot better. We talked about new head coach, new talent, other talent getting better, young team. So sky's the limit for this team. But talking about that, talk about this team, who needs to step up? <sighs> Great question. Um, you know, I'm going to go with Rubio. I think if as long as he's on the roster, that's going to be really important. Wiggins and Towns are going to continue to improve. You know what you're going to get from both of those guys. So somebody from the guard position like Levine or, and or Rubio, if Rubio is going to be here long term, he's got to step up and be the leader of this ball club. Yeah, that's a good pick in Rubio. If he's going to stay on this team, he needs to step up. He has plenty of talent around him, and he can really – lead these guys on offense. You know, they still do lack a little bit of shooting, which I think will hurt them. The guy I'm going to pick is Wiggins. He needs to step up. You know, his shooting could really help this team, you know, become an all-star, get to that level. He was a number one overall pick as well. And, you know, Towns is kind of looking like the better player, obviously, right now. So Wiggins kind of needs to get there and help this team and really give them that threat on the perimeter that they need. Definitely. I, I Listen, there's, there's no really wrong pick here because – there's a lot of guys that are going to have to do their job at a high level for this team to be able to get into the playoffs. Exactly. And they're going to need help from everyone. The bench is going to need to step up. So defensively with Thibodeau as a coach, there's a lot of potential for this team if they lock in and if they pick up his system fast. Mm -hmm, definitely. No question. That, I think that's maybe the biggest you know, thing that <laughs> if it happens right and they step up as a defensive team, the playoffs look like a real possibility. Yeah, and, and it's a team that I'm rooting for because I like Towns a lot. Um, you know, we'll talk about, you know, as we go forward with the league pass and the scheduling and stuff, but everybody wants to see the Timberwolves play this year. Exactly. You know, they want to see them in the playoffs too. Yeah. Especially against Golden State, it'll be kind of interesting because it'll be like, yeah. we'll see you soon kind of thing because, yeah. you know, the Timberwolves obviously won't beat them this year, but in the future, yeah. there's a real possibility. Yeah, you know what? I still can't wrap my head around Durant there, but <laughs> – there was a young team that could athletically match up with them. It might be the Timberwolves in a couple of years. Exactly. Talking about Timberwolves and in the playoffs, final prediction for this team. 41-41, right down the middle. I think they'll be 500. I'm not sure if that gets them in or not, but 12-game improvement from last year. Yeah, I like them around that 500 mark as well, maybe a little bit over it, it depending on, like I said, how they pick up the defensive system. But, you know, I'm going to go on the edge right here, and I'm going to pick them to make the eighth seed. I don't know why. I originally didn't feel this way, but talking about this team, Carl Anthony Towns, Andrew Wiggins, Chris Dunn, Zach Levine, all these guys want to be great players. So I'm going to go in the Hopefully playoffs. Hopefully the weather in Minnesota does not affect their play because they've been out of the playoffs now. That you're looking for them to break that 10 or 11 year drought and winters in Minnesota are not very fun. They're not very fun. So we're hoping they have a happy spring yeah. and the Timberwolves make the playoffs. But uh, talking about that, 
how many times are they on uh, national TV this Nin- year? 19, 19 times. That people yes. really want to see the Timberwolves play. The NBA believes the hype. I believe yes. the hype a little bit too, I guess. Um, so you're gonna watch them on League Pass? Yeah, yeah. This is a, this is one of those teams you get League Pass for. I mean, two rookie of the year is a possible third one in a row. They got a game with Cleveland on ESPN this year, Dallas, San Antonio. They have as many ESPN games I've seen of any team that we've looked at so far this year. So, yes, this is a team that you tune into. I watch them on national TV and I watch them on League Pass. They're one of my favorites last season. This year it'll be even more. Absolutely. Now on to uh, one of our favorite segments, the truth. Our emoji for the Timberwolves, what is it today, Harris? Well, it's going to be the baby. It's going to be the baby emoji just because they're so young. Um, it could be a baby raising a grandfather raising a baby too. Also, it could be <laughs> Kevin Garnett, Garnett emoji it. too. No, this is a young, <laughs> young team. Young, young, young team that has all the bright tools and future ahead of them. Uh, it's bright in Minnesota. We haven't been able to say that for a while, and they they nailed a couple great draft picks. And you know, hats off to them. They're a young, great uh, organization moving forward. Yeah, it's nice to see them finally get some success. Like you mentioned earlier in the show, they haven't really made the playoffs since Kevin Garnett was there the first time. So these young guys have a lot of work to do, make this make this community really happy. So And Nick, they're coming to Brooklyn on November eighth. You know, maybe if we're around together we may we go check that out. Yeah, maybe catch that game, catch cat in person. Yes. See how the see how the Nets are looking at that time. But <laughs> I got the Timberwolves winning that game going away. Oh, uh, I'm not going to make a prediction now, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping the Nets win. <laughs> yeah, it's only the sixth game of the season. For the wow. Wolves, yeah. But uh, that wraps it up for the T-Wolves. A lot of young talent, a lot of fun. We'll definitely be checking this team out and talking about them all season long. Thank you guys for listening and catch the next episode. Yeah, potentially a top 10 team in the future. So excited for, for the Timberwolves fans. And then thanks for listening, guys.